Hey, how's it going guys? My name's Daniel aka Hashlerps and welcome back to the Solidity Beginners Tutorial Series. At this point we've learned now operators. So next we actually want to have a look at something called units in Ethereum and blockchain and what we have to our disposal on the Solidity programming language. Let's just take a step back and look at a normal contract on a scanner. This is now Polygon Scan, so it's not Ethereum, but it kind of has the same concept. Each token has a decimal value. This is called SafeLips token, but in Ethereum, Ethereum's token Ether has 18 decimals. It means basically it has one with 18 zeros attached to it. When we work with units on a smart contract, we always work with the unit way. What is way and how can we explain it? Well, if we look at this little diagram over here, I'm just going to copy and paste it. I'm then going to go and put it in here so I can explain this to you guys. I'm going to take this and I'm going to comment it out. But in here, what we can see is that the assertion over here, an assertion is just making sure that this is equal to that. And if it is, it's fine. If it's not, it's going to, to break and revert or stop the execution. But forget about the assertion for just a, a bit. I want you to focus on this part instead. So I want you to focus on the way, the G way or GUE, and then the ether. So basically, way is the smallest unit that you get in the Ethereum blockchain. It is one way is equal to one way, right? One way is equal to one. One G way or one GUE, I don't know how to pronounce that, but anyway, is equal to um, one with nine zeros, okay? And then Ether is equal to one with 18 zeros, 18 decimals. So basically, Ether looks like this. One with, um, we need to now type out 18, how many is there? Six, uh, let's try this again. One, two, three, four. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay, that is basically how an ether looks in way. Okay, so that's one ether in, in way. And basically, that's why one way is equal to one, like you see there. But this translates into that in way. Now, the reason why this is important is because smart contracts work with way. And you can only send way in transactions when you work with it. That's why you need to be able to convert these units yourself. Now, it might be very difficult because let's say, for instance, that we want to declare a variable and call it the price of something. So we're going to say we have a UN256 and we're going to call it the cost of NFT, like so. Now, what do we equal this cost to? Because technically, if we want this um, NFT to be 0, um, 0 0.5 uh, or 0 0.05 uh, Ether, right? We can't write it like this. It will not be accepted because if we send this trans to a transaction, it will break. Okay? It will definitely break. Plus, it's not even an integer. This is a floating type value, so it will anyways break. What we'll need to specify, and let's make it easier on ourselves and think about it. If this was half an ether, if one ether is one with 18 zeros, so let's create 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. If this was 18, um, 18 zeros for one ether, what we'll have to send as the, as the cost of the NFT to declare it in a function, right? What we'll need to do is we'll need to put a 5 here at the end and then we'll have to take away a 0 in order for us to make it half a Ethereum value, okay? But that is not 
um, a good way of doing this. It's also an error prone way and there's a better way of working with way in solidity and uh, Ethereum and G-Way and all those um, nice units. And that is by actually actually specifying the unit. So we can say if we want our NFT to be 0 0.05 and we say that it should be Ether and we end the function like that, this is the actual price in Ether that it should be and this basically converts it to way. And if you send this in a transaction, it will send the way value, but that's how it works. And you can use this unit with way, G-Way, Ether and so on. How cool is that? Now, we don't only get units in uh, Solidity, which has to do with the money value or the, the way value, right? We also get units with time. And here's an example of the time units we also get. So I just want to specify this as well. So we also get the times. And um, you can see that we actually can use it also in our contract like so. So if we wanted to specify something in time, we can call it and say, well, let's create a UN256 and let's call it um, maybe level up rate or something. Um, level up rate. And our level up rate, we want this to be every hour. Now, what you can do instead of working out a timestamp and then converting that back, you can simply write one hour. Okay, but you have to write it in plural like one hours. But anyway, that will Im immediately give us 60 um, minutes in a timestamped value so that we can kind of determine how, um, how long of time has passed. So this is the kind of um, units we get with Solidity. I hope this helped you out because you will be using this quite a bit when writing smart contracts. I like to discuss gas with you. Now gas is kind of a mysterious thing that everyone knows about because it usually costs you more money when you do transactions on Ethereum. But what is actual gas and how is it calculated and so on. I'm not going to go into the calculations of gas, but I'm just going to simply stipulate a few concepts for you guys. Gas is the unit of computation in Solidity. Okay? It's the, is the unit of computation on the blockchain that Ethereum uses. The gas price is how much Ether you are willing to pay for a gas unit. So, Gas is a completely different unit, um, like Way and, and like G-Way or Ether, whatever you want to call it. Gas is a, it's a completely separate unit. Now, the price of the gas you usually set, and then the higher the gas price, the more it gets leveled up to the top of the priority list to be mined first, because miners wants to earn rewards for mining transactions and minting um, or mining them on the blockchain and therefore they get rewards. So the higher the gas price, the higher the transaction fee obviously, but the quicker it gets uh, mined on the block. And that's basically what it is. So the gas spent is usually when you look at transactions, right? So let's take a look at a transaction over here. The gas spent is actually how much gas it actually took the contract to run through the whole program and execute what it needed to execute. And this is why, where you can see how much gas was used by this contract. Now, uh, 230,000 gas units was used to execute this particular action on this contract. And this was the gas limit. Usually, a user can set the gas limit and say, this is what I am willing to go for and if it completes it with this uh, this much gas, it's fine. Usually, when you su supply an insufficient amount of gas that's not really enough to cover this, the transaction fails and says, run out of gas. It simply means that there was not enough computing power um, to complete this transaction and it reverts. You usually get back the funds, but you lose the, um, 
the gas fees that was already used. All right. Then we get the block gas limit. The block gas limit is the limit that the actual um, that the actual block can allow on the network, and that's why solidity contracts sometimes can't be too big when you deploy them. When you deploy a solidity contract and it's way too big and has way too much functions and and logic and so on, it will tell you that it is too big to be deployed on the smart on the on the blockchain and it can't deploy your smart contract. I hope you understand that a little bit better. It's just basically the unit that it works with. Now, each one of these state variables that you declare, a function that you create, a logical operator, anything you add in your smart contract adds to the amount of gas it takes to compute, to compute right? So if we, for instance, have an if statement or an operator check, it takes a certain amount of gas to do so. And that's how you work out how much a transaction would be. Um, and that's just basically how the smart contracts with the, on the blockchain works, right? You need a, v, a virtual machine to run your smart contract. And in order for them to uh, compute these computations, we pay um, miners in gas fees. All right. And that's basically how it works. So um, moving on, in the next video, we'll be continuing with our tutorials. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I can't wait to see you in the next.